2019 mini retirements just about over today i'm going to talk about what does it feel like to be on a mini retirement not have an income idle time can it be disruptive we're all wired to do something regrets of time lost power of stepping away and getting perspective and more thoughts on permanent retirement welcome to another edition of up and Knitted. i'm your host adrian babishoff and if you're new here welcome as well and if you're wondering what the show is about it is dedicated to building a lifestyle design that supports and brings quality to earth people exploring alternatives to the daily grind through liberation and independence moving from surviving to thriving and living life raw all right guys let's get in it today first off i just need to get this out of the way as uh it's getting very busy for me i've got to go back to work many retirements over but i'm asking you guys i never asked you guys for anything i'm asking you guys to subscribe keeps me motivated i've been getting I'm, I'm starting to experience some burnout i ask you guys if you can please hit the subscribe button and let me know that you guys are out there so i can keep doing these shows it really motivates me i'm going to do them regardless but it just actually gives me that extra little oomph so please consider subscribing if you like the show and you want it to keep going and for those of you who already have thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, but today i want to talk about uh well also let's get out of the way it is work time people i've got to get back to the workforce <laughs> we're toward, we're in the last week of september i'm gonna have to record in my truck i did buy a lapel mic so that's gonna hopefully help with the sound quality but if you're, from here on in you're gonna start hearing um some noise in the background that's the my big f 350 diesel 7.3 liter 1996 biggest truck i believe that's even out there it's diesel and it's loud so i apologize for that but we got to keep the show rolling no matter what i wanted to talk today about some takeaways that i got from this 2019 uh, mini retirement what did i get this year uh new what do i feel about it and one of the things i wanted to talk about was how great the experience is to watch your money just start going out of your savings or your you know I've got my budget basically set up, so it's not really a savings, but in any in instance, to have made money and then to watch it go, and the feeling of not working is like, it's crippling, guys. It's almost, it makes you paranoid. You're watching money coming out and nothing's coming back in. I think that this is very healthy for most of us who want to do permanent retirement, which we're going to talk a little bit later on the show. It gives you perspective, man. It gives you the feeling of what the, what does it feel like to actually be retired if you took for for those of you guys who don't know i do this every year this is my sixth year in a row and i only work about eight to nine months out of the year this year it looks like i took off about four months it's pretty nuts guys um i think that if you practiced in this if you did something like i did for three four months and just imagine that you're going to do this forever uh, really makes you think things through, uh, really makes you, as I preach on this podcast, to run your life like a business. And I, th I think it really wakes that up because you have to, man. Otherwise, if you just started farting off buying sushi every single day, you know, weekend and stuff, your, your mini retirement funds would drain out fast. So I think it's a good lesson. And it's kind of what we're coming up here later in the show too, is when you step into it, it's not, it's sometimes there's a lot of insights and things that you see that you wouldn't have if you weren't in it, if you didn't actually do it. As the learning pyramid says, uh, this is designed by science, I believe, where the top of the learning pyramid is, is lectures and listening to someone uh, speak, you know, is not really gonna, you don't really get much penetration as far as information absorption. You don't really get the experience. The best way in the army knows is to teach their soldiers who give them a, a lesson, but have them implement it right away and immediately practice and teach it to other people and that's the most the biggest form so what i'm saying here is that we don't really experience something i think until we're absolutely in it and we're actually the rubber's actually hitting the road so i think it was a pretty interesting thing this year to go have gone through that um idle time can be disruptive that's when i think a lot of us issues we have personally like me <laughs> uh psychotic me all my little people in my head is uh you know you sit down and then you could start when you have idle time you sometimes i think for some people it can actually be disruptive meaning you just start th thinking of horrible things that's happened to you in the past and things that are that could happen and you know the mind just starts going it goes into places it's very interesting you know i'm not saying this happens all the time but for me on my mini retirement i had a couple episodes where things would just because i had nothing to do right I, I was able to just kind of relax and actually finish a thought as i always say and explore things explore myself and my children and my wonderful dog that's laying at my feet right now but yeah there was some disruptiveness i think that i had to kind of check 
you have, to, you have to check yourself and go, what are you doing, man? You don't need to be feeding this stuff. This is garbage. Let's get rid of it. So that was pretty interesting this year, which brings me to what we're all wired to do something. Uh, there's a couple of TED talks I've heard and a couple of old timers. I talk to a lot of older people because I feel like they have a lot of insight on life. And a lot of them said that they get pleasure from work, that it's there's something in it to go and build something or do something. And for those of you who haven't talked to older uh, people, uh, like retired people is m the majority, 90% of the retired people I've met have to do, they're, they're into something. They volunteer time or they still actually work, but they, the difference they say is they do it when they want, how they want. It's not like a full-time job. Some of them actually have, still have like a full-time job that they get up every day. And so basically what human beings have told me and what uh, my ob observation is we are all wired to do something. And I think that a lot of us has them have the misconception that we're just going to sit around and do nothing like you can do that for a while but my experience in the six years of many retirements is there's always something that i could see that i want to improve or i want to build and i want to do and i'm very grateful this year as making my new burlap sack garden my complete 100 percent biodegradable non-toxic i mean this is the this is the paramount this is the apex this is the best work I've ever done and I've and I was able to do that because of my mini retirement and freeing up my mind and you guys are going to hear a lot about this on the show for food production uh, I don't want to get too much into that but the point I want to make is that I had that time off and that's how I conjured up these ideas and schemes the schematics for it and the whole concept so we're always wired to do something and I think that um, again it's really good to experience a mini retirement because it kind of puts in perspective what you're going to get in the future when you actually do retire if that's all if that's in fact your game i wanted to talk a little bit about some regrets of lost time i have with my kids um for those of you who are following me with these mini retirement things is i really had to work my ass off to get here it wasn't just like a cakewalk but also for those of you who know i have a special needs child and it was very difficult for my uh ex-wife to go to work having a special needs kid sometimes she'd have to be pulled out of school because there would be drastic things that would happen and and needless to say, I we both agreed and I chose to say, hey, I'll be the sole provider of this family. It's good for the kids to have somebody at home instead of both parents working. Um, financially, I did really good, but I, I was away from my kids and I spent a lot of time. And I have to say, honestly, I don't want to talk shit here. I'm trying to watch my language too, by the way. I guess it's disturbing some people. Too many F-bombs and everything. Um, comment below. I, I'm going to try, guys, but this is the way it comes out, man. I'm... But I'll, I'll put some work on it. I'll put some attention uh, if you guys subscribe. <laughs> but no, uh, there's a lot of things that my my kids. I think that I don't. I disagree with the the moldings, the way that that the ex-wife taught or didn't teach. And there was things in my kids' life that I feel like it's almost too late now. Like it's ingrained in them to. I don't want to point direct things out and get in trouble here. But just their. I don't know everybody's their own individual i think and you can't really force it's 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 my theory my philosophy in life too it's not our job to to form anybody a kid an employee or or uh students it's our job to inform them and see what they do with the information but i think there is a part of children watching what you're doing that doesn't part in them the blueprints for their dna of their the structuralization of their spirituality their mindset and everything and i feel regret that my kids didn't get enough of that from me when the younger days but i definitely on the flip side of that i am so grateful and happy for the work i've done for those of you who don't know i travel with my kids every single year this is the first year that i've actually recorded it. And you can find that on my youtube channel and up and in it and me and my kids just drive into the wilderness we just go from wherever we want we flip a coin we want to go here there and we've got three four months to figure it out when we come home we come home and it's just it's wonderful and that bonding time has been magnificent and the time that i have had i i do for those of you who don't know to have a 13 year old and she's basically moved out of my house and in with her mo mother and she's a 13 year old and it's very difficult to deal with with your child not even wanting to be around you anymore when we were around so long i mean we slept together in the same bed when we'd camp you know i hear her vo her breathing and feel the warm her warm foot on my foot you know and i tuck her in all the time and it's just i don't know i got daddy love energy and papa bear ferocious papa fucking bear oop f word uh ferocious bear uh daddy syndrome and i always just want to protect them and just love them so 
but I'm very happy that to, to take the time that I did do. And I think I want to drive this home is that for those of you who have kids, and I think this goes for those of you who are younger too, or, or just fit or even middle aged, time does not give a crap about you. Okay. It, there's no rewind. There's no reset button. And if there's stuff that you want to do now, do it now, guys. And I know some of you are freaking out. We're going to talk about that here at the last part. So I have some thoughts on, on uh, permanent retirement and what I found. I've been talking again to some colleagues and some, some of my, uh, my uh, senior citizens, older people who, are, who have been doing this in, the, in the, the game for like 40, 50 years. But if there's something you guys want to do, guys, while you're young, while your kids are young, before they want to have nothing to do with you and move out of your house and fly the nest. I mean, most people, I think, want their kids to leave. I, I don't want my kids to leave. My dream would be to have a big piece of property and my kids, my, my grandkids running around, but definitely have everybody with their own homes, but to be involved and be together. But if there's something you guys want to do, man, you guys got to do that shit and you got to do it now whatever it takes. You got to do some financial planning. Listen to my show. All Listen to all of them and subscribe. <laughs> or even give me a middle finger. I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm just, give me something, man. It's just nice to, to know that you're out there. But yeah, if you don't get that time going, guys, it's, it's going to pass you right on by. And that's one of the regrets of the dying. There's an Australian nurse that was taking care of. I'm going to do a full podcast on that. And one of the, the top regrets of the dying age people was that they didn't make enough time for themselves and that they cared too much about what other people thought of them and didn't have enough silliness in their life and played it too safe. There's a lot of them in there. And in the end, towards the end of their life, they realized that it wasn't worth it in the end. And that's sad, guys. And you're not going to get that time back. So do something. Listen to all these shows. That's what my whole design is, is what could we do now? How can we change life around so we can enjoy life? So it brings me to my next note here is the power of stepping away from something for a while brings new perspectives. Yeah, it definitely on life, on spirituality, on, on your physical health and everything. Again, when you get out, out of the system, the rat race and the, the workforce and the, just the jumble and bumble of everything sitting on this side of the fence, you definitely get perspective. You get perspective just watching people. I mean, you just watch how people are going. And one of mine has been this is that I'm thinking that there's a lot of unhappy people out there. And I look and I can see these people and I talk to them in contrast to some that I do meet, you can see them just shining, man. Their eyes are a glow and they're just, they're happy to be alive and they're full of positivity instead of negativity. And it's almost like I can see, I used to think that it was a projection of, of a projection of my own uh, insecurities or something seeing on other people. But I'm looking now going, no, there's some definitely some sad, a lot of them out there, a lot of lost, sad people, man. And I think many retirements definitely is a way to, for you to reconnect with yourself, your family, your thoughts and everything, your mind, your soul, spirit, and your ambitions to figure out how to change it. Because otherwise, when we're on that monotone, just the same thing. Uh, I think it was uh, Walden's Pond, uh, Henry Thoreau was saying that when he moved on this piece of property, he would walk to the lake every morning and he started to see where he would wear these patterns and there would be these, you know, this trail. And then he wouldn't go anywhere else. He'd keep on that trail. And as he trampled the grass down, there was this clear road where he didn't have to walk over weeds and things, but how easy we get stuck in repetitiousness. Uh, if that's even a word, no school <laughs> homeschooled. So I want to, uh, we're moving on some time here. I want to go quickly over here as some more thoughts on the permanent retirement, which I promised you guys. So this is the, uh, this is what I've got. And I've got a guy who, who's kind of a mentor to me and they gross about $7.5 million a year. And I just spoke with them about a month ago and I asked them, I says, what do you think about my philosophy, my ideas about retiring later in life? What I asked them is please tell me that you cannot do this, th your work in your sleep. He's been doing this for like 45 years, I think. And I told him, I says, I'll bet you, you can make twice as much or even 10 times as much money as you did 20 years ago. And it just keeps getting easier and easier for you. Do you think that you can postpone retirement until the later part of your life and achieve that? And he says, yes, I think that you can. Uh, but in California, definitely no is his thing because the rules and regulations, the cost of doing business is so high. And he says in the nerve wracking of, of his business, uh, his employees, basically keeping his employees. I asked him, well, what's, what are the obstacles? And he says, it's all the cost of doing business is draining them out. They can't really make money. I look, let's start with that one first. I looked at that and I said, well, you're not charging enough. 
And the one thing I can say about my personal experience, I'm not a very large enterprise, I'm just a one man show right now, is that I wait for the clients as I did yesterday and I give, I charge them a premium. And to give you guys an idea, I charge $1,800 for a two story house that needed all this stuff done. And I've got lanyards, like stuff to tie me off. I've got workers comp. I'm paying everything like my buddy uh, is doing. Uh, the guy told me that's ridiculous. I got a price for like 850 bucks. And I explained to the gentleman, I said, 70% of that through insurances and taxes and everything goes. And it's going to be two employees that are going to come there. So the boss and the owner, after $800, you guys can do the math, minus 70%. That's the, that's the leftovers for materials, for time. That means they're not paying workers comp or they're, or they're paying guys super cheap. And how do you, what kind of job do you think you get? But who cares about the quality of business on, on that aspect? The aspect is making money. And I think that... The problem with my friend here, even though he's been doing this so long, is that he's, he's not selecting the right types of jobs. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. But if you're not making enough money, then you need to quit. If the business is draining, that's no good. Now, I don't know what to say on that other than, yeah, if you're in California the way I see it, and this is for my clients, I have no shame and I don't feel guilt at all. It's as I tell them, it's value for value exchange. I'm not going to do this job for $800 and do everything I said, I'll definitely take stuff off if that's your, your thing. And I'll do, you know, I'll give you four hours for 800, you know, and, uh, you know, I'll give you a, well, I'll give you a day's work, but I'm not going to do all the rest of the, the things that I said. So you basically people tell me it's hard in California and I say, so what I wait and I get the clients that actually understand this, this value for value exchange principle. So no matter where you're at, I think in the world, you got to make the money. If you're not making money, something's wrong. And I want to leave the last one as he said, uh, I'd like to do a whole podcast on this about delaying uh, retirement and talk to a lot of other senior citizens and older people to give you guys some more perspective because I'm definitely doing this. It's, it's a done deal. I'm not, I'm not doing nothing about, it, about retirement. I'm putting a little bit of money. I'm not sure if I'll able to, to retire because of my special needs kid. Uh, anyway, I ramble. I want to leave you guys with the last one. As he says, it's very difficult to keep the employees that's what he said. And those are the key guys, like he said, he says, you, you are a key guy. You're bilingual. You can go anywhere in the United States and get a job and run stuff for people. And that's his recommendations. But he says, the problem is keeping when a guy like you, he said, he pointed to me, says the first thing they end up doing is going and getting their own contractor's license. So they wisen up and they want to make top dollar. So what he says is he tricked, they, they kind of tricked their employees by paying for their, their medical and their family's medical. That it's like a trick, like a, like a kid. So you stay here, kid, otherwise you don't get your allowances. And that's what kept our employees here. Well, the employees aren't happy. And maybe the employees aren't performing on op optimal levels to actually make the money. So to me, my whole thing was to get young people and offer them to work for me for 10 years and I will help them get their business started so they can go off on their own and be their own contractors, their own entrepreneurs. And that way they're there, they give a shit. And within that last 10 years, if I had about four or five of these kids working for me who were dedicated and wanted to be there, uh, I think I would kill it. So that's the, uh, you guys, make people want to do something, not have to do something. That's one of my things I, I think I saw from uh, Total Eclipse, the, uh, the uh, movie about the uh, Arthur Rambeau, the poet. And that's what he said. The difference between me and you is I'm here because I want to be. You're here because you have to be. And that's what I look in life. If you're, if you're doing stuff because you have to, you guys, we need to change that shit around. You, you need to be here because you want to be. And you need to be happy and you owe it to yourself. You're in debt to yourself to, to give yourself that and your family and your planet and to change things around. We don't need to live the stupid bullshit system that we have in place here. Unless it works for you, then go for it. But I think there's a lot of us who feel like it, it doesn't and there is a whole way and that's why I'm here to buck the system and show you guys a whole new way of living. If you guys like this sort of thing, check me out on Facebook. It's a private group everywhere. It's all up and in it. The Facebook group is private so that we can kick anybody else. So the community there has power so we to, to have control of, of things like that. There's also the YouTube videos. There's Instagram where I post every day about to show you guys what my life looks like and what I'm actually doing. There's the podcast, of course, and everywhere else. And as I always say, guys, don't lose your muchness. Human up. Carry on the fire. Live it. Love it. Own it. And bone it.